Welcome back to the Warbird Mistress. Uh, as I promised, I've got a whole bunch of uh, one 144 scale models, and I guess I'm going to go over it with you here today. So uh, I had my grandmother open the boxes. Not sure which one's going to be which. Uh, I ordered them all from uh, Baron Vlad on eBay and kind of at random. And I also got one from uh, Minicraft on Amazon. So I guess we'll just go over it. Uh, I do have to say, model building has always been a part of my life. Uh, growing up without you know, much in the ways of uh, means, but my brother and I always shared a room, and <laughs> over our bed was always the, uh, you know, basically the entire air war from Immelman's Green Eindecker all the way up through to a Fulcrum and a Fighting Falcon. So it was everything in between. Uh, I love building models. I just don't have the space for it without even having you know, like a room to myself or a desk to my own. It's kind of hard to get the space for it. So my 172 and 148 scale, uh, they've kind of been sitting around and they haven't been uh, you know, getting built because I just don't have the space, the time, the, the everything. Speaking of time, I do want to give a real hearty thanks to all of you with the well wishes for my grandfather who had a stroke recently. Uh, things are getting back to normal slowly and he'll be home pretty soon. So, uh, But you know, thank you for all the notes and for your patience and waiting for me to get out some more videos. So uh, without further ado, uh, get on with it. So we'll begin, I guess, with uh, this one. It's from a different brand. It's um, Fruta. Uh, it's pre-painted like most of them, and the directions are all conveniently in uh, Japanese, a language I do not speak. So, uh, arigato. Let's see here. We have the front of the fuselage, back. There we go. If you're shocked that my nails aren't done or anything, I work retail, give me a break. So, got the right wing, the left wing, there we go, uh, to, there's the vertical stabilizer, you got a prop with the 37 millimeter there, or 20 millimeter if it's going to be a P400. You got the drop tank. Okay, so that side's for the stand. That's the drop tank. And I guess like almost like a Lego. That's it. Somehow, there we are. So, uh, I've already built a claw to kind of test out the uh, the other ones here that are from the Wing Kit collection. Uh, I'm gonna go get that, and we'll start taking these out of the boxes and see what they are. Now that uh, we have a surprise build here. Okay, so this here is the A5M claw, uh, the Mitsubishi fighter that. I think everybody, uh, except for a few select in China, thought was the default Japanese naval fighter in 1941. If I'm not mistaken, the Ryuhuru was still outfitted with uh, quads and not Zeeks. But here she is. Um, I happen to love the quad. I think its development from this, you know, gull-winged att uh, attempt at a speedy little, almost French influence, I'd say, if I, if I might. Um, even though the Japanese, of course, were in the British sphere of influence and design. Um, all the way up to being the fighter that, that really defined the later half of the 30s for the Japanese Navy coming in from you know, ba basically nothing more than the uh, biplane fighters that came before it. And in a lot of ways, it's well, basically the pea shooter of the Japanese Navy. So you can see I had some problems with the decals. The, uh, they are tiny. They didn't really stick too easily. So going forward, I'm definitely going to work on that. So that's the claw that I already built. Uh, we'll have that next to the P39 there. And we'll get to the rest. Well, now that I'm comfortable, we can take a look at this one. This one is either going to be a U88 or a Helen, it looks like. For a second, I thought that was a Portuguese cross on the... Uh, vertical stabilizer, but it's not. It looks like this comes in 
four possibilities. You've got a Helen in two different paint schemes. You've got a U88 that's either continental or desert. I want to say it looks like a Francis. Yeah, I think number three uh, looks like the Francis. And then the B25 Mitchell. So these are the Twin Engine Aircraft Collection 3. Again, the only one I've built from this company is the Claude, but let's give it a go. And let's see here, we've got everything in there. I told her just open it up just so I don't know what's in it. Yeah, looks like we got a stand. We've got some instructions taped awkwardly down there. Again, all in Japanese. So, uh, number one, type 100. Good artwork. And it looks very simple to put together. And while I pretend to even try to understand this, let's take a look at what's inside. Uh, I got the teeth on the sides here. Nope. Okay. Oh, yeah, one side. Thought that was something pulling at it. Looks like we've got the tops of the, you know, bottoms of the engine nacelles. Let's say the paint job is very good. Looks like there's one machine gun missing. I'm sure I could probably make one unless it's, oh no, it's only supposed to be one. All right. Probably a single 7.7 .7 millimeter there. None in the tail, but it does look like tweezers are going to be needed for some of these parts. I mean, we're down to the, the radio aerial and everything. Uh, landing gear, definitely detailed. I'm very happy with this one. And the Helen is an interesting aircraft because it's, everybody thinks of the Betty and the Sally. You don't really think of this one. And it's, uh, Interesting you know, Japanese army bomber that probably would have been more useful had well, a combination of things. You have the Russian, the fact that the Russians have their means of production far, far away from anything the Japanese could hope to do. Uh, that's one issue you have. In addition to that, just the fact that there's very little that they could hit in terms of American targets. And here I am, uh, not even figuring out how this goes back together. So, this might end up being the first one I build just by default. I think it goes that way. There we go. Back underneath with these. Did not the way it came, but it'll work. So, still pleased. It's bigger than I expected. I mean, it really shows you the difference in size between a fighter and a bomber. Because I figured it was going to be just slightly bigger than the Claude, and then that's bigger aircraft than I thought. And there's a couple of aircraft like this in the Japanese inventory that people just don't really think of. You know, the Ki-100, you have the, uh, the Dyna, the Helen. Uh, this one, you figure, is a little stockier. It's almost like a cross between a Nell and a Betty, but I mean, even then, you had other aircraft that were just in smaller numbers or they were in the CVI front mostly. There were a lot of reasons why they didn't quite capture the American imagination, but uh, let's go for this one. These all open like pasta tops, I noticed. So this is going to be either a Zeke, uh, Type 52, uh, a Dora 9 Focke-Volk 190, or a P-51B, which would be the uh, Mark III in, jet in British service, I believe. So, if I'm wrong, I'll correct myself somehow, or I'm sure that you in the comments will. Although I have to say, you guys are usually generally very nice in the comments. But I'm always grateful when you add something or do something uh, that I forgot. So this comes with, all right, so it looks like I got C here. So that's going to be, I'm gathering 316s for the number 316 squadron, and 309 is for number 309 squadron. Uh, does have the semi bubble canopy that the you know I guess it gives you more headroom and you see that in so many British aircraft or Commonwealth aircraft to be polite to my own home dominion. Let's see here we've got 
Now this one, the cockpit is separate, so that's going to be interesting to keep the uh, keep the glue from fogging that up. We've got a single piece wing. Oh yeah, that kind of comes together very well. Best German wing on an American aircraft ever. So we've got that together. That's going to be interesting. Uh, parts are all... Not a lot of paint job on it, but it doesn't really need much. But definitely going to... I think the reading glasses are coming out for some of these parts, like that tail wheel that is going to be very difficult to get into place, but luckily that's why I have tweezers, reading glasses, and either for building models or because I'm a middle-aged woman who likes to have two eyebrows, but We'll figure this out. Just because Grandma only had one doesn't mean I can't have two. Get this back in there. That's a nice surprise. Now, Mini-Me, my niece, is absolutely in love with Mustangs. That was her first model aircraft. First one I think she knew by name. And uh, in a way, I'm kind of glad that I got a British one because as far as I know, she only has models of American Mustangs. So... That'll be a treat. Anyway, moving on. So here it looks like it's either going to be another Mustang or a George. I mean, I happen to love the George. It's, uh, everybody focuses so much on the Zeke as the naval fighter for the Japanese, and the George is forgotten. Um, yeah, it felt stockier. To me, it always reminds me of like almost a stocky barrelish kind of aircraft that you don't expect to be as good as it is. Almost like the uh, early marks of the Buffalo or you know, the Hellcat is a great example. So let's see here. We've got, <clears throat> oh, it's a George versus a P-51. Don't know if that means I got one or two. Comes in a variety here. There's even a training model, but with a single cockpit. Uh, I have to actually look up whether or not the George had a uh, double-seater version, but the bright orange training aircraft is definitely that. Let's see here. This one also has all different types of P-51D. Uh, oh, only one way to figure it out, eh? Oh, it is indeed the M1 K1 George. And a chiclet. Not sure why this comes with a chiclet. Perhaps a, uh, <laughs> one of those little uh, things that the fates give you, just considering how much problems I'm having with dental work lately. But, which is all done. But this has uh, instructions that are in numerical order, unlike before, where it was kind of just showing you every piece that goes together. And it does recommend tweezers, a knife, glue, and jewelry pincers, it looks like. But I have all those, so... And the decal work, I'm going to... Ooh, this one even has a cartoon. Uh, yeah. That's what I would have said, sure. Uh, I guess I'll have to take a picture of this and send it to anyone who speaks Japanese and they could tell me what the uh, little girl with the uh, pigtails and pilot suit is saying. Uh, other than that, let's take a look. So... There are a lot of little parts. I feel like Mr. Bean in the Christmas episode. Look at all those guns. Yeah, there's some struts in here. The wheels are separate from the struts, so it's a little more finely detailed than the Helen. I'm going to give it that. Uh, looks like we have two sets of decals, or one set of decals. One, uh, yep, there they are. 34302. Uh, one, two, and three. I guess that's, it'll tell me which Kokutai has those numbers. Here's the, I'm lucky I saw that. That is not secured in there very well, but I'm glad that I'll put it there against, uh, just so you can see. I'm glad that I saw the cockpit canopy there. It is, uh, thankfully painted. I mean, I, I have brushes that are this small, but since I haven't done Warhammer in well over a decade, since I haven't done naval miniatures in well over a decade, 
I'm my painting skills are not what they were. And I'm gonna be honest, I've never really used uh, an air uh, brush before. Grew up with using just regular brushes, and that's what I've always used. So we're gonna see how that uh, skill set fares now. Uh, still no use for the chiclet. Well, I'm busy not putting my feet down, uh, and I'm going to cut away for a little bit, find that canopy, and we'll move on to the next box. So I found the canopy, and I believe I retained my dignity, so uh, that should, if I do a blooper reel for that, I'm going to have to mark it plus 18, put it that way. Now, let's see what the next one is here. We have, oh, it could be another Claude. Uh, could be a B339 or an F2A, and it could be a Hurricane. This one is not open, so let's take a look. Oh, nope, it says 2A. So I'm guessing that that means it's this one. But let's figure that out. And that was right. So there's the quad. Uh, looks like this is the same one I had. Wing Kit Collection 9. So, uh, the one I did was 308. So that looks like it's, this is 2, 2, and 12. That's the only things I recognize. If I do the one that says 9, 1, 2, 2. Type 96, I guess, variant 2, 2, and then 14. So we'll figure out what that means. But as you can see, the uh, pieces in here, I'm not going to open this one because I already have that. They fit together nicely. It was an easy build, but that doesn't mean that it was perfect in the end. I'd like to do it again. Uh, so I'm glad I got this one. And it does have in here the uh, decals. There's two sets. So um, I'm not sure if that one actually came with two. It might have come with, or no, it did. It comes with one set of uh, the uh, Rising Sun insignia, the Hinomaru, uh, and then it has different unit insignia. So I guess I'll just have two quads. Uh, and I have two quads in my family, so there we go. So we cleaned up a little bit, and uh, now here's another one. This says 1B. That noise you're hearing was the, uh, was the chief box opener, so one job. Hopefully the, hopefully the microphone doesn't pick up too much on that. Uh, now this is, this is 96. Obviously that means the type 96 is the, the quad. And then 4 is the number after it. So I'm guessing that that has a reference to either the carrier air group or the unit. Or well, I'll figure it out or one of you will correct me, I'm sure. Let's see here. Oh, and I was wrong. This is a Dutch East Indies. Buffalo, so the B339, uh, as it conveniently says here as well. Yeah, these were, a lot of people bemoan the Buffalo. I actually like the Buffalo. Um, not the updated F2A3 models, but the ones prior to that. The ones with the, all the armor and the other things that would become so famous among other uh, American carrier fighters. The F2A was actually very maneuverable, and you know, the first marks of it, you know, obviously you look at it in finished service and duck and you know the uh, they did so well that in finished service it did uh, you know phenomenally well in the winter war and the continuation war the Dutch uh, you know if they really stripped it down I'm sure that they and they had the training and they had early warning systems in place might have, I don't think the war would have gone differently but it might have been more interesting uh, let's see here and I know I still have a video on light fighters too so We'll get into that later. But let's take a look here. Well, the colors appear accurate. Uh, it's got the tiny little parts that are going to remind me that I'm no longer in my 20s. And almost done with my 30s. Uh, but otherwise than that, it looks like a very similar build to the quad. It's held together by these almost Lego-like kind of... Uh, I guess where the, the, the where it sits. 
the landing gear looks like it's going to be interesting to put together. And of course, that's not a proper keep left sign. No, the, uh, those are NEI insignia for the Dutch Air Force there. So we're doing, that's going to be fun. I like that. I got my niece uh, two posters uh, that were puzzles that you know she could put together all that 48 piece for a kid and one of them was in Un Mavoy Mat, uh, Buffalo so I kind of wish it was that one but I'll settle for the Dutch. It seems that I can build models but I can't put them back in their boxes so while I play Pandora I guess we'll cut away and we'll go on to the next one. Play for juice. So, that's uh, this next box here. It looks like it could be a George uh, Typhoon, or Tempest rather, or a, uh, I want to say it's a P44 Jojo? Maybe. Uh, it's too long to be a, a Jack, I believe. But we'll figure this out. Uh, let's see. Type. Yeah, it looks like that's what it is. No numbers on here. Uh, definitely. Yeah, I think that's a Tojo, not a Jack. The Jack was funny. It's always like this little stubby thing that you know, I think gets overlooked. It almost reminds me of if the Japanese were taught to build a buffalo, but only ever saw photos of it. The Tojo is to me much more interesting because it's, it could have been what the Frank was, except for the fact they didn't have the engines. You know, it's the, uh, is it the Kinsey, I believe, or Kinsey I, or Kinsey was the engine. Um, but let's see here, this is, yeah, and there it is, definitely, it shows the, where it was even distributed. Uh, not that I'm suggesting that aircraft are, you know, migratory, but the, uh, especially if they have coconuts. But there they are, and it's funny how the American Army and the Japanese Army Air Force were kind of in the same places, whereas the Japanese Navy and American Navy faced off more, more often. Uh, one of those things that in the American case was, or the Allied case, I should say, was kind of because of ego, but also because of practicality, whereas in the... Japanese case was sheer, unadulterated rivalry and inter-service hatred. I mean, yeah, it's I make fun of other branches all the time, and that's our joke. You know, the, the Navy is the world's most expensive taxi service. The Army is not ready for the Marines yet, and the Air Force is, I have to be polite to uh, that those communities these days, but especially on YouTube. Uh, but it's fine. I mean, some of my best friends are. Uh, but seriously, though, I mean, it's it's just a, it's a rivalry. The Japanese just hated each other, and, you know, it's, there's plenty of documentaries on that. Go see it. But let's, for now, take a look at Tojo here. Uh, it does seem to be longer than I expected. I always think of the Tojo as being almost like the Jack and being, you know, kind of a round, uh, shape like a, a, a barrelish aircraft. Uh see here we've got the wings here, even down to the it's even a pito, and that's uh it's a little bent, but figure this one out. There's a oh this is strapped in there. There we go. Parts kit here. See, now this is going to be, this is very detailed. Here we have the, well, that's the stand. They all come with these clear stands there, and there's the canopy, which is not painted, so that's going to be fun. Uh, there's the prop and spinner, the horizontal stabilizers. And... Landing? Oh, okay, so these are the spats for, and the struts. These are the rest of the landing gear, I guess. I think. Oh, you know what this is? This is if I want it. That's interesting. This one comes with two sets of the landing gear 
uh, struts and spats so that it can be either in flight or, uh, you know, it's regular landed position. Uh, all right, so. And once again, it looks like there's cartoons here. There's a somebody warning me not to break things off of my finger or oh, to use a sniffer or a knife, I think. There's one guy there, looks like he's about to do Rosie O'Donnell's uh, pedicure. So I think I can figure this out. Yeah, I have to say it's obviously they're not weathered or anything, but I can definitely see some potential in these designs. But that is a, these are very well made. I'm pleasantly surprised. these in there carefully. This is definitely easier than the last one and it looks like we have, there's the stand. So I don't think I need the bags any longer. There's the decals. Figure that out. There's the, all the instructions seem to be done by different artists. I have to admit, some of them have the you know, anime characters in there, some of them have, well, to be honest, I might even, oh, there we go. So it looks like I can build it of the, well, it says 2A, so I'm guessing that that's meant for the either 47th or 19th. I'm not sure what they actually stand for, so again, I'll figure it out. Uh, second to last, and this is the last of the Wing Kit collection. Looks like it's either going to be a 109 Gustav, a Razorback 47D, or a Tech 22 Zeke. And it looks like a 3A got torn away there. So it looks like it's going to be a Type 22 Zeke. And it looks like it is the Zeke. So. It's got that dark green paint job. Of course, wings with the yellow leading edges. The canopy there is gratefully painted. I'm not gonna put it on anything right now. You know, there we go. Can't lose it on that. Gratefully, that is painted. Oh, we've even got some very nice paint details in the uh, in the wing there. And I have to say, this one is gonna be very interesting. Looks like it's an easier build than the others, but definitely has all the parts in the right places. And they're pretty easy to put together, gratefully. So take that out. And do this carefully because I don't trust it. And once again, the decals, I'm definitely gonna have to use some decal seal on that. Uh, I really, I honestly don't trust them after working with the clod. Oh, there are instructions. And these even have numbers in the order, so of course the ones that seem more complex don't, but there it is. Okay, and also, and last but not least, we have this one. This is a 110. Let's see here, German Luftwaffe BF 110 B2, sechste uh, Staffel von Nachhilfe Gruppe 1 in May of 1942. Skill level 2. All right, well, let's see what she's got for us. And for those of you watching the couch behind me, I am well aware that we're not done with all the slip covers. So it's not some new bizarre interior decorating thing. Not that I expect a group of a couple hundred men that regularly watch my videos to notice, but there it is. So here we are, the Zerstörer herself. There are a lot of decals here. And we've got. I guess the bag that they just fell out of. 
This is not painted. All right, so this is going to be fun. This might be a step-by-step -step series. Uh, looks very well molded, bigger than I would have expected. Uh, when you compare it, you can definitely see the difference in size. I mean, it's almost twice the size of the cloth. I could see how in air combat that would not be beneficial when you're trying to maneuver around Spitz, Hurricanes, even a Gladiator. I could even make Rudolf Hess's aircraft. Uh, one of the Erste Schaffel der uh, Spiegelgruppe Section 20. Or the one that's on the cover from the Nachtjäger Gruppe. Your minicraft model includes high quality water slide decals that adhere best to a glossy surface. I hope so. I've never built minicraft before. Uh, but you know, that's, there's always a first time. Like I said, I've just gotten started into these 1 144 scale uh, models. I've built one before today. This one you just saw me build. But I'm going to keep that in there. And I don't think I need the plastic bags again. Move this out of the way. And I just want to be you know, extra thankful to everybody that uh, does support the channel. For those of you who want to know what your donations, uh, your purchases from the store, and your YouTube memberships go to, software subscriptions uh, for Adobe and things like that, Office 365, I think those are the big two, uh, access to uh, some imagery that is not always readily available, but that I might have to find through another website. I have a couple of smaller subscriptions. What else? Um, Script, which is great for finding reference materials. And this, I don't mix my private funds with uh, channel donations and purchases, two separate accounts. Uh, it's, I just make sure that you guys get what you put in and I try to put in as much as I can. With my work schedule lately, you know, <laughs> Christmas time over the holidays is, you know, it's just this one big from Hanukkah through past New Year's and now into St. Valentine's, it's retail is retail. Haven't done it in 20 years uh, until last year, but getting the hang of it, I think. <laughs> but it is definitely something that takes up your time. The model building I wanted to do, like I said earlier, I just can't. This seems like something appropriate to when you don't really have a place to call yours and you still want to keep your hand in. So stay tuned and we'll definitely go build by build. Uh, talk about each aircraft, and the second I figure out what any of that Japanese says, <laughs> I'll probably tell you what it means, too. Uh, uh, moving forward, I have the outlines and the slides and everything put together, as well as the videos that go into it all for the fourth and fifth episodes of the Pentalogy of Luftwaffe at Sea. I also have the uh, material all put together, but I have to write the script for the second part of the Coast Guard uh, aviation video. That's going to take us through the uh, basically the war years and the 1946 uh, we're going to stop with because there was there were some changes in Coast Guard aviation at that time. Uh, obviously I do have some older videos I can go back to. I have the one on light fighters that uh, is actually one that I kind of keep bouncing around because I'm never sure how I want to approach that one. And other than that, it's up to you. So tell me what you want to say about airplanes. Until next time, I'm Claire and I am the Warbird Mistress. Take care.